Hey guys, welcome to, uh, I don't even know where we are, how many Sundays we've been doing this, but welcome to our leadership Zoom. Um, we are doing, let's see, chapter four and five of the book, if you're following along in the book. If you don't have the book, it doesn't matter. Um, launching a Leadership Revolution is the book, and the little quote they had for this chapter was, you must rule yourselves before you can rule others. So typically, what what he was saying in the book was typically we, you know, get through school, we get through college, we might do a master's, we start doing whatever our job is, ideally, or we look for a job, you know, whatever the case may be, and then you may get a job, and then you may learn for that job, and then typically, at some point, you reach the age of our personal comfort with the world and our jobs and all that, where we stop learning and our minds can run idle. A leader's growth can't be optional. You must have growth in these two categories. So we're gonna talk about these two categories, personal and then your influence with others. So you have to always be having some type of personal growth. And then because of that personal growth, then you can influence others. Okay, so here is the first thing if you want for your number one personal is character. Obviously, this is pretty um, self-explanatory. We all know that we have to have character in order to be successful. Now, granted, there's a lot of people out there with no character that seem to be successful. However, I don't think that they're going to stay that way long or something. Something's got to give somewhere, right? But we want to have integrity and we want to have character. So I just put on the side honesty, integrity, courage, faith, a humble spirit, patience, discipline, self-mastery. Those are all wonderful words to go along with character. No leader can succeed without the ability to execute tasks. So then tasks will be the next thing. All right, so here's all the task words they put out. Act, accept responsibility. I think that's a big um, issue today in our culture, in our world, where people don't accept responsibility. They don't have good work ethics. Uh, they cheat. We all know this. Um, accepting responsibility if there's a problem on your team. You as the leader, it doesn't, doesn't really matter whether it was your fault or not. You need to take responsibility for that and go and see if you can uh, work through it. Availability. It's important to be available, not 24-7 to your team. Absolutely not. You definitely should set some work hours if you can, or at least some hours where you are spending time with your family where you are not, quote, available 24-7 to your team. Uh, I'm a people pleaser, and so I typically will respond pretty fast to people. That's just how I am. But there are times when I'm with my family and I really try and turn off my phone. It's a work in progress because, um, you know, I want to help help so all the time. So, um, but do set some boundaries. But you need to have certain hours or certain times of the day that you are available to your team to help them, to help them grow. Also to your customers, if they have questions, don't sit around and wait for those customers to have problems and then try and call customer service and then get frustrated. You need to be proactive with them and every couple of weeks you're checking in with them, making sure everything's okay. And then you don't hear this, you know, a month later, I've called customer, or I've emailed customer service five times and I haven't gotten a response. You would already know that there was a problem and then you can be the best customer service to your customer. Um, invest time. We are investing time in these Zoom meetings on Sunday. You're investing time in your business to be here on this Zoom uh, training. And then I know that a lot of you turn around and do Zoom trainings with your teams off of these. You do trainings with your team, so you're investing time into your teams. Perseverance, this is a marathon. It's not a sprint. Obviously, we all have different journeys we're on the lengthwise some of us have been doing it two days, two weeks, two years, and everyone's journey is different. I truly believe God puts you right where he has you at whatever level you are, and he's not going to, you know, help you rank up and, and grow your team until you're ready, until your heart's ready and in the right spot. 
It's just my take. Um, and then, of course, another task is execution. Can you do the things that you need to do when you need to do them? All right, and then relationships. This network marketing business is completely different than any other one out there. I, I know most of you already know this, but some multi-level marketing companies, you wanna be the only one on your street. With Plexus, it doesn't seem to matter. Or it's different, it, it's not necessarily, you have to have great relationships with people in order to do your business. Whereas Plexus is somehow, and I don't really know how to describe it, but it's just different. Um, so in your relationships, you need to be accepting of people. Obviously, we're going to have people of different um, religions, races, everything. You know, we are, we are all different. We all think differently. We all have different love languages. We all learn differently. And so you have to be accepting of people in, and their differences and find out what those are so that you can help them use their strengths to help you and not necessarily think about, you know, what they're not strong at, but help them in their strengths. Approving of people, appreciate, appreciate people. I think that we're all really good about that. Encouraging our team whenever something exciting is going on. Um, I've seen lots today on Jamie's page of someone signed three today at Nicole. I think her name was, I haven't had the pleasure of meeting her yet, but just, sticking things on your on your Facebook page whenever you know they have had turned silver turn gold when they rank up you guys are really good at that so keep doing that because people will come back when they're appreciated always seeing the good in people I think we will look at someone or read somebody's post or read something into somebody's post that they didn't mean I think we're very good at doing that I know that it's so important to try and see things from their point of view and just always it's hard, but if you could always just try and I don't know, what's the word I'm looking for. Um, see it from, I, I don't really know the word I'm looking for, but see it from their point of view where you're not, you know, put yourself in their shoes and think, well, did she really mean it that way? Probably not. Am I internalizing this? Am I, am I taking it, you know, personal? So try and see the good in, in people and know that they're not, you know, out to get you. They, they very well uh, may not have meant anything by whatever the comment that they said. Um, encourage people. We already talked about that. And then others first. To me, this is a job of serving. Serving others first is the true ultimate act of, of Christ. And as a Christ follower that you are serving others. Same with your marriage. Not that this is a marriage conference, but hey, same thing. With your marriage, you are serving your spouse. You are serving your team. All right, that is pretty much all of chapter four. So I'm going to go ahead and go into chapter five just because both of these chapters were small and we missed last week, so we'll get caught up. Five levels of influence. Now, five levels of leadership we're going to get into later on. This is talking about there's five levels of influence. A true leader inspires others to lead themselves. So we've kind of already touched on that a lot, that as a leader, you want to create more leaders, not followers. So here are the five levels of leadership. I'm gonna start at the bottom and work our way up. All right, so the first level of leadership is what you start as, as a leader in whatever company or whatever thing you're, whatever you're leading. Position, the level of rights. So People follow because they have to. So you could argue that I signed up under Melissa, so technically I, quote, had to follow her because her position was above me. Now, our business is different. You know, this book wasn't necessarily, obviously, written for Plexus Ambassadors. It was written for um, anyone that um, had, you know, basically a job or um, any type thing like that. So some of these you just kind of have to kind of make your own definition as far as how they relate with your plexus business but so position people follow you because they have to you have positional leadership you are the boss they don't have a choice they have to follow whether you want your leadership or not whether they want your leadership or not so 
what's fun about Plexus is that if I say didn't like Melissa's leadership, then I could go off and I could do my own thing. Right. But here's what I've learned. That's not true. I love Melissa's leadership. I'm just doing that as an example. All right. So what is fabulous about Plexus is duplication. We all know that if you will duplicate, usually what your upline's doing and continue to duplicate, uh, these people typically rank up faster instead of reinventing the wheel. Now, everyone has great ideas and we want to change and we want to, we want to do things, you know, to the best of our ability. So obviously if you have a great idea, we all want to hear it. And then we want to duplicate that, right? So always, we're always changing and looking for new fabulous ideas. But so um, position is the first uh, level of influence you have. You basically are their quote leader. And so that's the only title you have at the beginning when you start with your team is you, you know, I am quote your upline or whatever. All right. Two is called permission. The level of relationships. People follow because they want to follow you. They believe in you. They trust you. They don't have to, but they want to follow you. So this, you know, you can look and think that you probably have people on your team that are new that are still, they're following you because of your position. And then you have people on your team that have been there longer. They're following you because of permission. Um, these might be people that know you a little bit, or maybe they've been in it a couple months and they've watched you post and now they believe in you. They've seen you're consistent. And so they trust you. The third level is production, the level of results. People follow because of what you have done for the organization, your accomplishments. So this is what I would say, maybe when you hit Emerald on your Facebook page, you will get a slew of friend, re friend requests. Everyone wants to quote, follow you on Facebook and see what you're doing when you hit Emerald. Um, sometimes senior Ruby too, you'll get lots of other uh, people wanting to follow you, but when you hit Emerald, that's the jewel level and with Plexus and that's your accomplishment. You, you know, you're getting your Lexus and you post pictures of that. And suddenly people on your team are like, Whoa, she actually did it. She got there. If she can get there, I can get there. And that's when they really start because of your results. That's when they really start paying attention and really start working harder. And then that's when you're going to have other people looking in that have been watching you this whole time. And suddenly they're like, Hey, she just got Alexis. I think I can do this. Um, it, even at the lower levels, when you hit gold, I mean, that's a big deal. And when you hit gold and someone on your team that just joined says, Oh my gosh, she hit gold. I can do this. So it's, a, it's, a, it's important at any level. All right. The number four level is people development. So this is where people follow because of what you have done for them. What's in it for them? Note, this is where a long range growth occurs. You, your commitment to developing leaders will ensure ongoing growth to your organization and to your people. And you can do whatever you can to achieve and stay on this level. So people development is where um, you have helped someone else rank. Uh, you have poured into this person and they have ranked up or they're just doing really good. And that's where you're developing this person. You're helping this person. And that's where you are uh, level four. They're there because of what you've done for them. And I think the longer you have people on your team and the longer you're serving and helping them, you know, that's where they go. So I think in our business, we can have people under us at all these different levels. Okay. The number five level of influence is personhood. Personhood. This is a level of respect. People follow because of who you are and what you represent. Your values. It says this step is reserved for leaders who have spent years growing people and organizations. Just a few make it to this level. Those who do are bigger than life. So I might say perhaps Celeste might be up there at that personhood, you know. Um, she has achieved Diamond Diamond, 
the top, top of the company, you know, I don't know. Can we go diamond, diamond, diamond? Um, I'm assuming she's going to sign her husband up now and work her way up again. I mean, why wouldn't she? So she has respect of the company and the people that work there. Uh, she has great Christian values. And so in a way, because she's diamond diamond, she, she is kind of bigger than life. And so I think that's kind of, kind of neat. These five levels of leadership. All right. Mastering the five levels of influence that we talked about, learning, performing, leading, developing leaders, developing leaders who develop leaders. So all this is what we've talked about this whole time uh, is you're going to learn, you're going to perform, you're going to lead, and you're going to have followers, and then you're going to start developing your leaders, and then you're going to develop leaders that are suddenly turning around and developing leaders. And this is where we all want to be up here at the very top. It's all about relationships. To me, this entire business is about relationships. And if you can build relationships, and in a way, you have been building relationships your entire life, right? I know I have someone that tried Plexus from me that we were friends in fourth grade. So my daughter's age, we were nine and 10 when we knew each other and she found me on Facebook and ordered Plexus. So you have been building a relationship with people your entire life. And that's who right now is may or may not be signing on your team. These are all your warm or hot market or things like that. So relationships, and then you're making new relationships, hopefully, or you should be making new relationships that you can eventually bring onto your team, not because you're not seeking those relationships just to bring them onto Plexus, but you're seeking these relationships because it's all about relationships. This whole life really isn't it. All right. That is pretty much all of chapter four and five. Like I said, they're very short chapters, but they're very important and we can't really go on until we talk about these things. So just going back real quick. We talked about relationships, our tasks that we need to do, our character. So all this is influence over others and your personal growth. So I would encourage each of you to make sure that you are reading for your personal growth as well. So find a, a book um, any kind of growth book, you know, or, uh, GoPro, um, this leadership one, like we're doing any of those, uh, failing forward is really good. There's so many good books, um, that you can be reading. And I would encourage you to maybe read a chapter a day or a chapter a week, you know, whatever you can fit into your schedule but I would encourage you to always be growing and always be seeking opportunities to grow. Um, if you're not to the point where you're speaking at meetings yet, I would encourage you to start stepping out and maybe start with saying the prayer at a meeting at the beginning. If y'all do that at your meetings or getting up to pass out gifts is a really good thing. You know, your award, not awards, your contest at the end. If you, if you draw, for a prize, um, maybe stand up and you're passing out the gifts, just something where you're up in the front of the room, uh, being seen, talking, that really helps grow you as a leader. Now, granted, I know there's some of you that will never speak in front of people and that's fine. You can have a great business not getting up and talking in front of people if that's not your strength. Um, all right, that's pretty much all I have. Jamie, are you still there? Did you go away? All right, Jamie started the meeting, and so it's on her computer. She's recording it, so I cannot, let me, see, I don't think I can unmute you guys. I'll try. Let's see. No, let's see. Shoot, I cannot unmute you guys. I think only she can since she officially started the meeting. All right, hold on just a second, and I'll see if I can um, text her and get her to come back.
All right, I just texted her and said, come back, come back. I'm sure she's putting her shower curtains up because, you know, that's important over there in her moving times. All right, well, if she's not coming back. Oh, there she is. Yay. Hey, will you unmute us? Sorry, I left to get mom some um, towels. It's all good. That's important things. All right, does anyone have any questions? Or wait, wait, wait. I, I, they're not unmuted yet. Hold on. Okay. Well, as she's, now unmuting, you are. As she's unmuting, y'all, um, if y'all have any questions over anything, not in the, what we just talked about, but anything over um, maybe convention, anything, fire away. I have a question real quick, if you don't mind me asking. Um, just right before this meeting started, I got a message from about the third person this weekend that, um, you know, attempted to change their backup order. Uh, one of them was an ambassador, two were customers, and they haven't received their orders, and it's way past. I mean, they didn't even, one of them said she wasn't even charged for two mentioned so should should they call or should I call or I don't know what is this a an ongoing problem or I just uh, it's funny I heard from so many in a short period of time I haven't I mean I haven't heard anything recently but you're welcome to send Jamie or I the information and we will try and help you out or look it up okay thank you you're anybody else Okay. Well, it was short and sweet tonight. Good Thank job, Jim. Thanks. All right, guys. Thank you, guys. Have a great night. Bye, we will see you next Sunday. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Bye.